Guys, welcome back to the Hush Life podcast. It's been a moment. Um, we're trying to do, our goal is to do one a week. We've done a fairly decent job with that, but we're going to do a better job. Today's topic is that man there down there in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, can we do a drum roll, please, Log? Can you add that in After Effects? Oh. Mr. Matt Lee, welcome to the Hush team. So if you guys are aware or not aware, Matt Lee is our new camera guy, one of our new camera guys. Um, if you guys watched the best season yet 3.0 last year, you know that Matt uh, was long on some of the trips. He uh, was the one responsible for, for taking Gage on his elk hunt, if you guys watched that. Um, and then I took Matt with me to Wyoming to hunt whitetails, and he filmed all that and edited it, the video. And then we took him to Colorado with us as well. We knew, I knew anyway, we met Matt maybe two years ago at the Sportsman's Expo. Uh, Matt was a guide at the time for the R&K Ranch down in Utah. And uh, we were just talking about, you know, helping each other out, like maybe build their Instagram up and they could uh, supply us with some, maybe some tags. Anyway, long story short, we met Matt, super good dude. Uh, he fit right in immediately. And uh, then we started talking about camera stuff and, and his passion for running a camera. And we, I think we all saw pretty quick that Matt was very passionate about it. And so, Matt, the floor is yours for the next couple minutes. Give us a rundown of everything Matt Lee. Well, what's up, guys? Um, it's a pleasure to be here. And, yeah, I guess uh, um, I'm Matt Lee. I'm from Utah. I'm 23 years old. And, yeah, married, got a little girl, and just love hunting and fishing and shed hunting is okay, I guess. Yeah, now that he's in the zone, like, dude, this is fun. Like, dude, I'm really getting the bug again. I'm like, yeah, dude, you're in the money pocket right here. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to sidestep that real quick and say just a couple things real quick. Uh, you guys are watching this. It's already up, right? Law or uh, Shed Tour is going up tomorrow, which this video will be behind it. So go watch yeah. the, the latest Shed Tour videos. Matt accompanied Eric. On their trip down to, we talk in states or we, how does shed hunting work? Do we not talk? New Arizona. New Arizona. I like it. Anyway, so yeah, Matt joined Eric. And yeah, if I would have had that same trip, Matt, I would probably be a shed hunter now. <laughs> they cleaned house. Yeah, it's definitely uh, fun shed hunting with the, one of the best dudes in the business. So you learn a lot real quick. Yeah, you learn a lot about Matt real quick when you get to go with him on a 10-day road trip. And, uh, you know, Matt's, it's crazy to think like how long we've been doing Hush. And when I think, okay, Matt's 23, you know, I'd say we've been rolling five years or so. So like that puts him back to 18, maybe when it was like our first movie night. And Matt was telling me he's been to all our movies, which I didn't know that, I'm not gonna lie. I did know, I do remember him from events like expos and I remember him from the podcast, like movie night we had, like it wasn't a movie, but it was more of a podcast. And I specifically remember talking to Matt quite a bit there, but pretty wild to think, you know, an 18 year old kid when we kind of started this stuff um, is now our employee, you know, and a lot of time has passed and he's, he's been able to watch the channel grow and and all that. And I just asked him like, dude, did you ever think you would, you could like work for Hush or like, would that be a thing? And I'll let Matt take it from there. But yeah, um, you learn a lot about Matt in 10 days, by the way, he's like four time state champion wrestler. Uh, can we, can we plug that video in? We learned that Matt was a really good wrestler when we were in Colorado and me and Logan had the good idea to like, let's challenge Matt to a wrestling match tonight. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as I heard Matt was a collegiate wrestler, I told Casey, I said, I'm going to wrestle him tonight. <laughs> I lost. I said, that's a bad idea. And then for whatever reason, I was like, I want to wrestle him too. And even though I have like 50 pounds on Matt, he threw me around like a rag all. Anyways, back to Matt Lee. Sorry. Yeah, I guess to the question, did I ever think I was going to work for Hush? I don't, I never thought I would be a Hush employee. Like I dreamt of it and kind of in the back of my mind, I was like, if I worked at it like long enough and hard enough and keep just... I guess being in these guys like peripheral vision, just like keeping myself kind of not like a fanboy, just DMing them all the time, but like support them. Like if they have a movie, like go there, show my support, like try and talk to them a little bit. Or like if I made a YouTube video or something that I thought they'd be interested in, I'd like shoot them a DM like, Hey guys, I made this video. Let me know what you think type of deal. But I wouldn't like, I guess I wasn't like the fanboy who was like, 
dude, follow for a follow or like, can I have a free hat? That type of thing. But I was like, I was always trying to like get in front of them, I guess. And uh, I, I, I've done that in a couple different hunting companies uh, already. And it's just like, you kind of just stay in front of people and let them know that you're there and you have a desire to like, like improve their company. And I, I don't know, it's crazy how many people will give you an opportunity like, like me, I have no college background in like marketing or social media or camera or anything like that. It's just all self-taught off of YouTube and from people that I've become friends with and learning from them and learning uh, tips and tricks. So that's the answer to that question, I guess. Heck yeah. I have a question for you, Matt. So from the outside looking in, right? You knew about us. You watched some of our videos, obviously went the movie premiere and stuff like that. And I know you've only done one trip, but has it been to your expectations? Like when you were watching us from the outside compared to now being an employee, what are your thoughts there? Wow. That could get deep. Yeah. That's yeah cool. dude. <laughs> deep end, dude. I like no, it. No, like what you see is what you get. Like I see you guys on YouTube and Instagram and I'm always like, is that really how they're, how they are? You know, like everybody says you never want to meet your celebrity idol or anything like that because they're never the same. And I think like you guys are better than you are on Instagram and YouTube. Like I've had the opportunity to be on several trips and it's just like, I don't know. You guys are animals. Like it's crazy. Like being an editor and you can cut out all these things that make a hunt look hard or make a hunt look easy and you can kind of form it the way you want it but you guys are just so like rough and just you it is what it is when I go hunting with like Eric let's say or uh Casey like Casey on our whitetail hunt like we could have made that thing look so gnarly and just like crazy but like we just we just rolled it the way it was like you know what we killed in like the first two hours and we rode horses in it wasn't much of a grind and I mean that stuff is just some some other companies or people in the industry they would have made that to look like some 10 day like 50 mile wilderness hunt like I mean it's just that's the type of people you guys are you just you're just honest and you're just cut and dry like not cut and dry but like I guess what you see is what you get you guys are real well shucks i get i get asked that question a lot um as a cameraman i never know how to answer it because uh i like you have experienced you get to be behind the scenes on things and i think in the industry a lot of stuff um can get staged or uh made to look a different way for the audience to perceive it but that's a that's a good point from you uh being an outside viewer now that you're in it and uh awesome yeah Yeah. i'm I'm glad you picked up on it because it's, it's one of the things we've always said since we started this thing, um, even back when it was just me, Eric and Brian was like, let's just show it how it really is. Like, you know, you hear about TV people doing, and I shouldn't like corner the TV people, but um, you hear about people, certain people staging a lot of things. So they'll shoot an animal and then they go back the next day and sh- stage the shot or whatever it might be. And I think that was kind of what annoyed us about um annoyed me about the stuff growing up watching on sportsman's channel or whatever is just like man i just want to see it really how it is and that's kind of like developed into how we showcase things is it's not always just the hunt it's you know a lot of times we show getting ready for the hunt and then the hunt and then at back at you know camp at night and all that because i think we've always said show how it is because we feel like more people will be able to uh you know feel like they're there with us right because that's how a hunt really goes it's very very little shooting and killing an animal that's a small portion of it but it's everything in between that kind of makes up a hunt yeah that's sure that's one thing i remember and uh this goes for like watching a movie or even a tv show or even like a hunting show i'd be like dude like i don't get it they filmed the deer and then they they also got the film of the guy drawing back and pulling the trigger same in movies i'd be like I just don't understand. Like they're over this guy's shoulder, then they're over this girl's shoulder. That means the camera guy should be over there. And I was like, I was so confused as a young kid. Like they must have multiple cameras and everything must have been just right. And then I took an, a film class, film one at like Salt Lake Community College. 
Um, that's about the extent of my college career, but that's when I learned about like the shot list and like the, the filming things afterwards to get those things. And then, then the hunting videos just seemed like so stupid. Like once you learn, yeah. I was like, Oh, now this is why they have like him actually laying down when there was really only one cameraman, dude, it was a trip. Dude. My favorite is like, when it's like super shaky footage of like the animal and like the kill shot. And then like they plug in like a clip of like some cinematic, like safety click off and like yeah, a trigger exactly. pull. And it's like, wait, you can't have one like perfect composed shot. And then one where it just yard sale, everybody's trying to get everything together. That's, that's a perfect example. And it happens so often. And it's just, they try and think that the audience is kind of stupid or just, maybe the audience doesn't care or maybe they do and just have no way to voice their opinion. I don't know. Well, it just happened by default. I feel like, you know what I mean? Like videos were that way. TVs were that way. TV shows, movies. I think it just happened in the beginning by default. Like this is just how you make a film. Well, I think, I think a big reasoning behind that is, I mean, with that being said, what we do is pretty dang hard. You know, if you, if your mic isn't on, your settings aren't just right and you miss the shot, you're kind of host. Yeah. So I guess your option is to like, go fake it. I missed a, I missed an audio shot on BMAC. Like, uh, it's very so, classic though. Yeah. That was classic. Cause we voiced it over and had some funny clips. Shed crazy did a voiceover on it, but I didn't hit the, uh, just the mic. So I did snip a rifle shot. Boom from another kill shot and it, it just synced it up right and it looked right but i didn't feel too bad about that one so oh, let's, something like that let's take a step back matt we've always talked amongst us um you know where we got our start and our passion for the outdoors and for all of us it was our dads luckily we had dads that were willing to take us out in the woods and kind of introduce us to that and then we you know fell in love with it um because of that where did you get your start in the outdoors and who who was re responsible for it well, I wish I had some crazy like story, but yeah, just my father and like my grandpa, he just, they were both huge examples and just, just always, I don't know. I, I miss the old days. Like we'd always come up, have a deer camp with all my aunts and uncles and um, we'd go out and hunt. And yeah, I, my dad was tugging me, toting me around when I was, I don't know, four or five years old we'd go dove hunting and he'd make me go get the doves and rip their heads off and put them in my vest. Like before I could hardly even talk, I guess. But yeah, I was just, just super grateful for my dad and grateful to grow up in an area like where I lived to where literally I could drive my four wheeler from my parents' backyard and be an unlimited amount of wilderness that goes on so far. Just it's funny you say that you don't you wish you had this crazy elaborate story about how you got into the woods but almost to me it seems like that is almost like the anomaly anymore is for whatever reason like what you're just saying is how like I saw hunting as a small kid was deer camp was a thing and it happened every year and you had you know the trailers like rounded up you know and you had 10 different families there kids running everywhere but you were there for the deer hunt that just doesn't happen anymore like it used to and me and Eric have talked about this a lot like we want to we have a project in the back of the minds in the back of our minds that we're going to do one day and that kind of brings that back the old deer camps but yeah i feel like that is kind of almost the anomaly anymore is you know your dad just took you out hunting yeah and i feel like there's such an emphasis and focus nowadays on just killing the animal like, like that is such like a huge part of it that like prior to social media or I don't want to blame social media but prior to like maybe the internet it was more about hanging out with family and friends and then possibly driving across deer jumps across the road and shooting it and whether it was a two point or a 200 inch deer I mean you take it back to camp and everybody's high-fiving and it's I, I feel like the the focal point of deer hunting or hunting in general has just shifted like 180 degrees so it's kind of hard to bring it back when I, I guess the, anything everything everybody cares about right now is just like the kill like and I, I see it like slowly like becoming deeper like the way we were talking about like tv shows and stuff back then like they wouldn't even air a tv show if they didn't get a kill shot and now that's just kind of been switched to where people are like whoa 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 like 
I want to be connected to the people in front of the camera and behind the camera. I don't really care about the kill shot as much anymore. I want to feel like I'm on the hunt with them. So I feel like we're making our way back there, but it's happening a little slower than I would want, I guess. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. I think that, um, you know, when I started this thing, I that was me. Like, I filmed a bunch of hunts, and if it, something didn't die, I was like, well, what's the point of it? And then we got into this rhythm. It was like we, we understood that, like, people aren't just watching to watch something die. They're watching because they want to relate to, you know, their deer hunting experience from last year where they went and they worked hard and they had fun at camp and they laughed and got up early and, you know, they did everything they should have done to kill a deer and it just didn't happen. And they can relate to that because, you know, what is the percentage of somebody going out on a general season deer hunt and killing a deer, maybe 30%, which would be high. So, yeah, I think, um, I think, I think you're right. I think we're getting back to that. So your dad, like all of us got you excited about the outdoors. You would tote you around when you were a kid and you were, you were passionate about that. And I always say that to people, people ask me all the time, like, how do you get your kids passionate about hunting and fishing? And for me, like just looking at my family with like, uh, I got two brothers and a sister and my older brother hunted a little bit. You know, my dad gave him the same opportunities. He gave me, took him out deer hunting and fishing and he just didn't fall in love with it. He, he, he liked it and he did it enough that he killed a couple animals, but, uh, you know, the last elk he ever killed was, was one of the first videos I ever filmed for this channel after he killed it. Um, my brother has a giant heart for animals, which we all do, but he's very, very, uh, uh, he loves animals a lot and he was always the guy that was carrying birds around dead birds and acting like they were alive anyway so he shot this elk and you know it took him a, like two or three shots to kill this thing and he's got tears in his eyes and he's like that's the last time I'm ever going to do that so going back to what I was saying is you know he was given every opportunity he just didn't end up being very passionate about it like I was but for people asking like how do you get your kids involved in the outdoors all you can do is give them the opportunity to be in the woods and hopefully you make it an experience where it's fun and they want to come back. But at like the end of the day, your, your kids are going to have to make the decision if it's something they want to do. Right. So mm -hmm. your dad gave you that opportunity. You became very passionate about it. And uh, you, you guys had a really like where you grew up was pretty cool because you had access to millions of acres of national forest, like at your fingertips. What's one of the stories you remember about growing up hunting, maybe with your dad or maybe just with your younger brother. Oh, okay. So here's a good one. My brother and I, one day after school, I remember it was after school. And by this time I had just barely got my driver's license and I had this old F-150 and my brother and I had archery deer tags. And we're like, okay, let's go up this Canyon and uh, see if there's any deer. Normally there's deer like off the road. And that was kind of the tactic, right? Like you drive and then like when you see a deer you gotta like hurry and hop out like get off the road and try and fling an arrow at one that was kind of the tactic and my brother and I drove up this road to this spot that we had ne never really been like we'd been up the road but we never pulled off on the spot and we climbed up this steep quaky face and got up on top where it was grassy and I remember I had an archery over-the-counter elk tag and then my archery deer tag and it was super windy and like just about to storm and I remember getting up to this grassy meadow with like quakies and like looking across it and just seeing like velvet antlers and my brother and I were just like holy crap like look at that thing and we thought it was a raghorn bull elk like because how big the antlers were and I was like okay Jed you stay here and I'm gonna sneak up there and try and shoot it and I had like the same little diamond uh bow three pin side like 20 30 40 yards and didn't practice near enough and I go crawling across like this meadow and there's like a little clump of brush, like pretty close to the deer, like out there towards the middle. And I was like, okay, if I can get to that brush, like I can draw and like come out and shoot it. And I'm crawling and crawling and I get about like 30 yards from them. And I look up and like their butts are to me and the wind is just so strong. Like they can't hear or smell anything. Cause I'm sure I was being noisy and they're just two like twin giant mule deer bucks. Like like this unit has been known for some giant mule deer like some governor tag mule deer and stuff in this area like right by my house and I'm like holy crap and they still don't see me and I feel like they could hear my heart beating because it's just like pounding out of my chest so I go like sneaking I'm um, about I don't know like a foot or two feet from this brush to where I was telling myself I was gonna knock an arrow and draw and shoot and all of a sudden the deer both picked their head up and I just remember seeing trash and just mashy bucks and they're looking, but they're not looking at me. They're like looking past me. And I'm like, 
what the heck? So it feels like I'm standing, like or I'm on my hands and knees. I feel like I'm staring at these deer for like five minutes. Like it was probably 30 seconds. And they're just standing there, standing there. And pretty soon I, I had an arrow knock and I just start to draw. And then they like look down at me and snort and take off. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like I felt like I wanted to puke and cry at the same time, you know? And I like, why, what did they, what made them pick their heads up? And I look like over my shoulder. And my little brother, 11 year old brother, he's just walking through the meadow, like on his tippy toes, trying to see where I was at. Cause he's like, <laughs> and I awesome. go up to him, like, what are you doing? And he's like, you had been gone for like 15 minutes. I didn't know if you were hurt. I'm like, holy crap, I was so <laughs> close and to that day. That's still one that just like gets me. It's just, oh, it makes you sick. But such a little I mean, brother move, 16. man. Such a little brother <laughs> yeah. move. Just worried about safety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's gone for a while. We better check up on him. It's funny how your mind works <laughs> when you're when you're a kid and like how everything becomes really like tragic real fast. I had my 12 year old son Gage out shed hunting uh in Nevada last year. And you know, it was me, Logan, and Gage, and we kind of split up because that's what you do when you're shed hunting, right, Eric? Oh yeah. Okay, so we split we were doing it right then. So we split up and we're going up a draw and you know how kids get, you know, off the beaten path a little bit. And dude, like 10 minutes into the hike, I'm like, where's Gage? And I did start to panic a little bit. And it had probably been 20 minutes. Anyway, I caught catch up to Gage. He was, he got turned around and, and, and like I said, it had been 20 minutes and he was, he was a little scared. He was crying. And I was like, well, what were you thinking? He's like, I could see camp and I was just going to walk to camp. I'm like, bro, it only been 20 minutes, but you know, it's funny how your mind works when you're a kid. Like, He's hurt. I haven't seen him. <laughs> yeah. There was a time where uh, my dad sent me hunting with his buddy. It was like spike elk hunt, snowy, like aspens and pines in an area I've never been. And he just kind of like, all right, you're going to sit right here. I'm like, yeah, all right, like I'm down. And so he left me probably, you know, go sit in the other meadow or another trail. The next thing I know, it's snowing and I'm cold. I don't know where he went, so I just went straight back to the truck, man. When he got back to the truck, he was so pissed. Where did you go? Like, dude, I was freezing out there. And he's just so, he got so scared that when he came to get me, I was just not there anymore. Yeah. But yeah, I was, th I was thinking the same. Like, I wasn't scared. I was just like, it's cold. I'm out. So, Matt, you grew up hunting and fishing with your dad and your little brother, which is awesome. Um Kind of fast forward, uh, you graduated high school, got married, and then how did you get involved? Or like, when did you know that you wanted hunting to be like maybe your full time job? Um, probably around like my, I don't know, through like high school, uh, I like an Instagram page, you know, like everybody does, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be popular, I'm gonna be an influencer. So I was always just like, okay, like I'm growing, I'm growing, I got a thousand followers, blah blah blah, and I just always was like, I gotta, I gotta be hunting. I gotta be like guiding or fishing or something. And I guess like, right, right out of high school, I kind of had, like, I guess, I don't know. I had a brain surgery and right before that surgery, I was like super nervous because it was kind of like semi sketchy surgery, like what they were doing. And I just remember like thinking to myself, like, if I, if I come out of this, uh, I'm just going to start doing like what I want to do. Like, I'm so tired of like doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Like go to school, like get a boring desk job. I'm like, I just want to do what I want to do. I want to wake up happy every day. And I just, I just want to be doing what I want. And, and it took me a minute. Like I've had several jobs, like to you, to kids out there, or people listening right now, like don't think that it just like happened. Like I've had six or seven jobs like in between like where I can guide that are just just tough jobs like working at body shops working at cabinet shops just like grinding every day like trying to provide for my wife and my family and and but never letting go of the fact that like I know I can do this I just have to like when I get home from work like like have the energy like go get my camera go try and film something learn how to edit like watch YouTube videos and, and I guess that's, that's where it really started to take shape was, um, after that at a hunting expo, cause I'm super fortunate. I was blessed. I was born 
or not born. I live really close to a guy named Kendall Card, and he is pretty big in the hunting industry. He has several companies, and me and him became friends. He just knew I was like a fanatic high school hunter and fisherman, and he started taking me around. And uh, through high school, my junior and senior year, I'd go work at hunting expo for him, just like selling retail stuff. And and one day I was selling trail cameras at the hunting expo, and the guys from RNK came to buy like a hundred trail cameras or something. And, and I connected really close to them. And, and, uh, I got a pat on the back from Kendall for selling like a hundred trail cameras and the RNK guys were pumped. Cause I was able to get them a good deal, which was just like what Kendall was selling them for. And, uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, where do you, where are you from? Like, what do you do? And I was like, well, I live up in this town and I really want to hunt and I guide for a living. And he's like, well, here's my phone number. I'm going to call you in August and have you come guide for me. I was like, what? Like, are you serious? That's how it is. Like I can just be a guide. And he's like, yeah, you got to do a few things and uh, do like first aid and CPR and food handling and things like that. I was like, okay. So I was just grinding, got that done like that week, like just had it all ready to go. And he calls me and I go up there and it was, I was just super lucky. I, I was like the only new guide, which is crazy for how big that outfitter is I was the only new guide that year and they were able to take me under my wing with a bunch of really experienced guides and people who literally kill things like every single day as they're living so like quartering a deer or an elk or glassing just like they're next level they're just so proficient at it I was able to be right on right hand man for all those guys and just learn like tricks and traits of and just like things that make them killers and just so efficient and I was, I was able to do that every day and I guided, uh, for four seasons, no, five seasons now. And, and, uh, I've had the experience to meet so many good people and just learn so much like guiding my first deer client. Like that was like one of the first times I ever did like the bone out method. Like I've quartered deer, but like we were clear up there and I was like, okay, I've watched YouTube videos, but I didn't tell my client that I was like, we're just going to take the bones out up here. So it's lighter, you know? And, things like that so I've had the opportunity and experience to just grow like 10 lifetimes in five short years like being able to be a part of like I don't know three or four hundred like pack outs to where like you just get so proficient and so so comfortable in that situation like I said like 10 lifetimes of experience like super short and compounded so I'm just grateful for that opportunity yeah that's that's super cool I have a similar background where same thing random jobs in between being able to guide and same experience with being around people who did it a lot more than me and learning a lot about skinning caping off an animal quartering Um, but that's cool to kind of hear your story on meeting different people and it almost connects a lot with our last podcast with Isaac um, like two podcasts ago where like getting in this space, because that's a huge question we get is how do I get into the hunting industry? And man, I swear, if you look at most of them, it started out with some kid, some guy who would like do stuff for free. Like, and I, I'm not saying like no one should value their time or value their work, but when you offer, you know, to go work a booth, when you say, Hey man, yeah, I'll make time to work your booth. I'll come help you set up and tear down. And before you know it, you're networking. Like you said, you went to events, you went to movie nights, you got in front of us, you met us. And uh, dude, almost everybody's story has a lot of the network, like literally who you meet and how you treat people. And that's one thing I've noticed from Matt, like everywhere we go, he's respected and people like him because he's just a good person and he's always willing to help. So uh, I've noticed that like on our trip, man. And like you notice the weirdest things and I'm not much of an, a boss. I don't consider myself like an employer, you know, even though we are here at Hush, but you know, Matt's the type of guy to, when it's time to unload the four wheeler, he's undoing the straps, pulling out the ramps, you know, I'm off gap, filling up the gas tank, he's loading it. And it's like, you can just feel that he's a hard worker and uh, he's willing to help. So. Yeah, I want to, I agree with that. And that's one of the things that, um, you know, when we were talking about hiring Matt, uh, me and Brian, talked about was your work ethic because neither of us knew anybody that wrestled as much as you did that didn't have a strong work ethic 
And, uh, but going back a little bit further, I think it's very powerful. What you said was, you know, it literally took a brain surgery for you to get to a point to be like, if I don't come out of this, or if I do come out of this, I'm going to be done with this nine to five mentality that is kind of engraved into all of our heads growing up that you just have to go get a job. And, you know, if you like it or not, that's just what we do, right? It's what you have to do. And, you know, Brian has a similar story. It wasn't about brain surgery, but it was basically, he got fired and he was kind of like blown away. Like now what, you know, and he had a, he had a previous um, boss that sat him down and was basically like, Brian, if money wasn't even a thing, like, what would you want to do? And, uh, and same with me and Eric, it took me working on a job that I hated. It took me away from my family. I wasn't happy. It made good money and I knew I could support my family, but it took me working in that job for six or seven years to realize like, man, is this all, is this it? Like, is this life? And then you come to a, a conclusion that like, man, you can live this life and do well and be passionate about what you do. So when you said that, man, I got goosebumps when you said it, because that's, that's a pretty cool story. It's very powerful is I think people and hopefully people get to a point in their life and, and maybe some people don't, but they get to a point where they're just like, what really makes me happy? What would make me happy? What would I be excited about waking up every morning with a smile on my face? And I think a lot of people just need to find that. Yeah. And like going back to the whole networking thing, like, I don't, I don't know how to say this, but like, Kendall just didn't like come into my life, like just wanting to like, same thing kind of with you guys. Like I was always in front of Kendall, like sending him trail cam pictures, like showing him like, Hey, I found this elk over here. Do you know about this elk? So it's not like, I don't want anybody to think that like, you can't get into the hunting industry if you don't know anybody. Like I knew nobody, like literally nobody. And I just stayed consistent and tried working hard and by no means have I arrived, but like, I just, I just want people to know that like, there's no cookie cutter way to get into this company. Like Eric was saying, like, or get into this business. It's just hard work. And if you truly have a passion, like have a passion for the outdoors, not just a desire to be Insta famous and to kill a big animal, like you got to have a passion, like to be out there every, every day and to like connect with the outdoors, like everything else is going to follow. Well, I think it goes back to, and like Eric was saying, it was your willingness, right? It was, you knew that you wanted to get here and you were here. So I'm on camera, but it was your willingness to do all those things in between to hopefully get you somewhere that you could be doing something that you love every morning. And like Eric said, yeah, you don't ever want to unvalue your time because, that, you know, that's for me, that's like the only thing I own is my time, right? But in order to get here, sometimes you have to do, you know, maybe not get paid, but maybe get a free trail camera, do whatever you, you need to do. But it was your willingness that got you in front of Kendall, it sounds like. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, like I said, just grateful for everybody that I met, especially you guys and just... I don't know. I want to ask you guys a question like for, and this was probably a question from a lot of dudes. Like what, what do you got to do or what attributes, I guess you kind of already answered this, but like what made you guys like want to hire somebody like me that has like not a whole lot of background in social media. Well, I guess I've been doing it for eight or nine years, social media, but I'm not like a guru by any means, but like not a huge degree in like social media or like not a professional videographer and I'm young, like, what kind of, what kind of drew you guys to me, I guess? I think that's a great question. And you're right. Like we do get asked that a lot. And I think the term would be like, what would make somebody employable? Like what would make, like, what are some attributes or traits that would, that we see in somebody that'd be like, he would be a great fit. And for me, I think it differs with everybody we hire. So just so you guys know, we get we've been asked this a little bit um, as of late, like what happened to Martin? So Martin, we hired Martin about a year ago, right, Eric? It was almost two full years. Oh, two full years. That's right. Sorry. Um, but we hired him and he got to a point and he did a phenomenal job for us. We love Martin. We have nothing but um, hopes for him. But he got to a point where he, he wants to go and try this himself. And we'll never blame anybody that wants to go and try to do what we're doing. Because that's kind of part of our message is, and that's what we've been talking about, is if you're passionate about this, like, you can go and do this. You can go and, and pursue your passions. It, it might not even be hunting. It might be whatever. So Martin got to a point where he wanted to go try it himself and uh, he's doing it. He's, he's uh, making YouTube videos and, and kind of running the program. And uh, like I said, hopefully we'll be able to collab with Martin here in the future. 
But going back to what makes somebody employable, we've hired, I think now like a total of, we've had four full-time camera guys basically over the years. Yeah. Yep. And everybody's a little bit different, but I think what, what got me excited about you was you had an eye for the camera, obviously. And, you know, when we were on the elk hunt, you were showing me some edits you did. And I was like, man, these are great. You were passionate about it. And that's the biggest thing. You weren't just passionate about hunting and fishing. You were passionate about actually running the camera. Um, and, you know, me and you talking back and forth going to Wyoming, it's like you're passionate about it and you still research stuff. You still learn stuff. You're still, you're still excited about learning the new technology or the new way to shoot this or edit this which was cool but a big thing for us is just a fit right like eric was saying earlier like you could be the most talented guy in the world but if you don't fit in with us like it's going to be really tough how many guys do you know that you can go spend 10 days with not knowing them very well and be excited about that and i've told that story before but like me and eric knew each other pretty well we'd been on a hunt or two like for a few days and then um when he came on full time that first year we went and spent geez how many like 22 days yeah new mexico trip 22 days from two antelope hunts right into two elk hunts 22 days we spent together and i got home and my wife's like how was it i'm like i don't know too many people i can go spend 22 days with and not like want to fight but eric <laughs> was that guy right and so i was like this is gonna work out great and same with you man like we knew that right away and, and there's a phrase um in the in the hunting industry if you want to know if you want to know or find out who somebody is go spend like an elk camp with somebody so because hunting you know you're lots of ups and lots of downs a lot of hard work a lot of in between time um and when we did that elk hunt, i was like man he's a great fit but what are some things and you know when we hired you when we were making the decision logan was a big part of this it was like logan what's your thoughts on this yeah for me dude the biggest thing that stood out to me is your willingness to learn and I can take, so we're, we're obviously a big team, but me and you are going to be pretty tight teammates when it goes through going through media, you know, understanding how we want our videos to look, how we want the brand to look. And you already have background in camera, but your willingness to learn and to adjust and to adapt to our style was crucial. I'll take any employee, any coworker, no matter what level of experience, but if they have a high level of willingness to learn, I'll take that man any day of the week. Yeah, I, for sure. Like I, I'll totally agree with everything they said. It's got to fit in clearly now that you're kind of the, the, the South slopes, you know, we got Casey and South Logan. slopes. Uh, you gotta got learn that the Salt Lake area. So he was like, yeah, hopefully this, this guy's got to get along with, with me because he's going to be rolling hard with me. But, uh, you know, outside of like, just the type of person you are, like a, just a well-kept person, like positive, that, that attitude, um, that's huge. You're young, you're, you're, you're ready to go sleep in the dirt with me. Like that's huge. But more than anything, man, like I, from my own experience over all these years, I can totally see when someone's on the grind that you're talking about so you're not you know like you said you're not college edu educated you don't have this background or anything so with knowing that and then seeing your level of knowledge in the hills behind the camera the camera functions packing out now like hunting those are things you can't learn through school. So I understand just from seeing you and knowing you enough and through my own experience and what we've done here is even outside of your day jobs, your work jobs, you were on the grind. I can tell you're the guy who's like, oh, a camera. How do I learn about it? I'll figure it out. I don't care. YouTube videos, tutorials, time in the field, et cetera. Oh, I want to learn how to hunt. Like, how am I going to do that? You're going to go on your own hunts, other people's hunts, guide hunts, et cetera. So I can just tell when someone's mind is almost thinking like my own was which is like nothing will stop me nothing if there's ever a hurdle i'm going to figure it out and i can see that you have that attitude like logan said like willing to learn but self-motivation like i can clearly see yourself motivated and you probably learned a ton of discipline through your wrestling background and you're you're carrying some of that over into this this career um so for me it's just I can see who is on that little grind that whatever you want to call it, those after hours that is not exposed on social media. Um, no one tells you about it. It's going on 
you know, at late at night, it's going on in your free time in between work breaks. I can see that you're just that kind of guy who's taken advantage of every second to learn and to move forward and, and make progress. And that's what I'm looking for, man. If you can take that energy and bring it to hush, like, like that's how we keep growing. That's how we, you know, keep finding people that connect with us. So I can see that you had that mentality of like, nothing's going to stop me. I'll, I'll learn how to do it. Yeah. Uh, Cause that's, that's how it is in this day and age. Right. I mean, just when we, uh, we needed an extra camera guy in Colorado. And that was one of the first times we brought Matt that was I think the second time and just going over some of the edits with you and stuff. And it's like, well, how'd you learn that? I YouTubed it because you wanted to learn it. And that's so huge. You can literally become a master at anything. If you're willing to devote yourself time to learn and actually like research how to do things. And that to me, that's huge because you don't paint yourself into a corner. You don't need um, somebody holding your hand through the whole thing. You can have that want and that need to go learn for your own. And that's to me, that's for any employee in any section of what we do is huge. Yeah. If you guys keep talking, Matt's head's not gonna be able to fit in the screen. It's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> Something I was I want... just going to say go uh, real quick. So like bringing that in from like the wrestling background, like I guess my favorite quote of all time, uh, I'm trying to think who said it, but it's, it's, it goes like a river cuts through rock, not by its power, but by its persistence. So like, that's kind of how I've always attacked things. Just like one bite at a time. Cause like, if you look at like some of these camera settings or editing softwares that are like pro level camera and editing softwares, you'll just crumble and just like collapse. But like, if you just go one bite at a time and like, I feel like I learn a little bit more like each week, like, okay, like now I want to try like masking to the next transition, things like that. Like that stuff like will compound upon itself and pretty soon you'll, you'll be where you want to be. But that's the fun part about this job is like, it's always going to be evolving. So you're never just going to arrive. You're going to have to keep chasing it, which I really enjoy. Yeah. I like that. Like, um, it's just even with YouTube, it's like no one's ever retired from YouTube. We don't know where this thing's going. We just have to keep evolving with it, right? But going back to uh, what we were talking about earlier, like for you guys at home, you know, we get this question a lot. How do you get a job in the hunting industry? Like, how do you go about that? Um, and we, we just touched on a, a few things of why we decided to hire Matt, you know, specifically. But uh, along with that, um, a couple of things is I would ask you, and Eric does a phenomenal job with this, you know, when we're at expos or, or anything, people always come up with ideas that, you know, they're like, I want to start a YouTube channel. How do I do it? And Eric's sure. first question to him all the time is why, why do you want to start a YouTube channel? If it's to become rich, it's going to be a long, long, long grind. If it's to become famous, same thing. Like you have to have a reason why you want to do this thing. Like, why do you want to work in the hunting industry? If it's because you're super passionate about hunting and fishing, great. If it's because you're super fat, passionate about hunting, fishing, and filming, great. But I think the biggest thing is what I've taken away from what everyone just said is your willingness to learn and to get to that point of somebody wanting to hire you. You agree with that, Matt? Yeah, I agree. I was always taught that there's always going to be somebody better than you and somebody working harder than you. So there's no point in acting like you're the best or you're working the hardest because that's just never true in any facet of life. So you just always got to keep, keep grinding and just like taking, taking other people's advice and knowledge. Cause no, nobody knows it all. Like nobody, I mean, this life, we're all in it together. Like nobody has it figured out, like whether they act like they do or not. So that's kind of how I've approached like this job, especially is like, I've never been a cameraman for a living. So I'm not going to try and change their mind or change what they want me to do I'm just going to be like okay well why why am I editing it that way or why do we do the end screen this way and I'm not saying that like because I don't want to I'm just trying to learn and like I literally take notes like when Logan and Eric and you and BMAC are talking like I know it sounds stupid but like I I, I feel most productive when I'm learning like taking notes so I can like look back back oh okay that's why they told me the end screen's got to be 20 seconds longer that's why that logo's got to be there like just little things like that 
I mean, you make yourself more valuable to the company and you're always going to have a job. But if you just skim by like bare minimum, like you can't expect to be promoted or be a huge part of any team if you just do bare, bare minimum all the time. Yeah, it's not just with hunting, obviously, with any job you have, like, why, like, how can you make yourself unfireable? Like, how can you put yourself in a position where, like, a company just can't lose you, right? And you're great with camera, you're great with editing, you know, things that we're going to ask of you moving forward is, like, maybe learn some 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 design work stuff or whatever, and, and you're that guy that's going to go out and be like, okay, how can I learn all this stuff? But it's also, like, I have people to ask me all the time. They'll be like, well, how do you get, how do I get sponsors? I'm like, well, why are you valuable to a sponsor? And they're like, well, I shoot this long range thing every year and I do pretty good. I'm like, you have an audience. They're like, no. I'm like, how are you like, you have to make yourself just like being employed. Like how, because that's all a sponsorship is really is we're being employed by this company to promote their product. And so it's like, how can you put yourself in a position to be valuable to that sponsor? Just like it is to an employee. And all those things we talked about, willingness, like, you know, skill set, willingness to learn new things, all that stuff all comes into it. Yeah. And on that topic, real quick, since we're on it, because I, I seem to have a lot of those conversations with younger people, typically, like, how do you get sponsored? My first reaction is like, let me look at your, I, I just always want to remind them, like your platforms, whether it's, you know, YouTube, your TikTok, your Instagram and Facebook, like to me, your platforms are your resume. If I go look at your platforms and see that you made, you know, six YouTube videos in, you know, three months you were going, and then there was a dead space for four months and then you got motivated and came back. Like to me, that's your resume showing me that like, you're not dedicated. So, you know, if anyone does want to go get sponsored real quick, we'll talk about it. I really think your content is in my opinion, considered your resume. I can see your work ethic. I can see your persistence through your, your platforms. So again, a lot of people are always thinking, if I get a sponsor, I'll go create this. If I can get a sponsor, I'll do YouTube, where it should be completely opposite. You should just be grinding, posting, making great content, entertaining information, all that consistently for a period of time. You know, say someone come and said, Hey, I want to wear hush hats. I want to be sponsored by hush hats. I would like to see that you have consistent content for a year or two and never skip to beat. So if anyone's trying to get sponsored, like just remember that, you know, all your platforms are public and everyone can really kind of determine your work ethic based on your, your dedication and, and how much you post and how much, how active you are. Yeah, like going back to talking about that willingness of how do I get from here to here, and you should never like unvalue your time. But at the same point, when we started this thing, it was, you know, Brian came on to help with that specifically, like, you, you know, when I met Brian, he's like, you should have people giving you product. And I'm like, I don't know anything about that. I don't know how to reach out to him. And so Brian's great with pike charts and graphs and emails and all that stuff. So he just started sending out emails to companies. And I think it was at the uh, sheep show in Reno. We, we met up down there because I was showing one of my videos or something. And we literally went and like knocking on doors to, to all these uh, companies that were there. They're like, Hey, like, this is what we do. This is what we all, you know, this is us like do YouTube, social media. Um, what do you think about working with us? And we walked out of there with like probably a free cooler and like two sets of game bags and maybe like an elk call. And we thought we had just hit jackpot right? Like maybe $500 total in gear, but we were willing to do that, take free product to show them that what we could do would benefit their company. So we weren't getting paid. We were just getting free gear. And that's, that was kind of our foot in the door of how now where we have, you know, our 14 or 15 sponsors that we have, it all, it all started there. Our, us willing to work basically for free to showcase that we could promote their company and help them. Which again, here we are right back again on we're willing to show you, we're willing to prove it and in some ways do a lot of work for free or in some way, very little. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. I mean, it's, it's been fun hanging out with Matt over the last 10 days. Um, like Casey said, we went shed hunting. We had a lot of ups and downs and 
just a battle losing a four-wheeler key unfortunately lost my vlog camera but if you guys haven't seen the shed tour go check those out we're we're definitely uh, gonna do a hard push this spring and keep that rolling but it's been fun hanging out with matt um learned a lot about him and had a ton of fun he's just an easy guy to get used to so i would say to the audience um you probably see a lot more of Matt. Like we, when we bring on, you know, these, it's almost weird to call him like a camera guy, like even Logan, I mean, that's really their main job. But at the same time, we like to show that person. We like to invite that person to be on the camera, to engage with the audience. And, uh, you know, we hope, we know that you guys will have a really good chance to get to know Matt over the next few months through our videos. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how we roll. It's been, you know, it's kind of funny. We're having conversations like, dude, so I would, I hope you would want to talk to the camera. Like, Hey, if we split up and we go shed hunting, like you vlog, you know, like you're going to like talk. And so I don't know, like, it's funny just to throw Matt into the fire like that. Like typically when he's done camera work, he's been only behind the camera creating productions or teasers or maybe a product video. But now I'm like, all right, you're going to be like one of us kind of. So I was yeah. curious, like Matt said, cause because I lost my vlog camera, he's like, dude, I've edited a couple of videos and it's really just like a story of me. And he's like, dude, your audience wants to see you shed hunt. I'm like, I lost my footage. So like roll with whatever you got. <laughs> so is that weird? like, it was really weird. So when Casey brought me on kind of flashback real quick, um, Casey had like 70,000 subscribers to the Casey um, Hushin with Levere. That's what it was called before. And then he brings me on and I was very timid at first. Like, Hey, what do you think of this idea? And he's literally like, after a couple of weeks, he's like, just run it. Like you, it's your own. And man, it was kind of hard to read those comments of like, who is this guy? Like flat brim hat, like we're here for Casey, you know? So I wonder if that's going to be like a hard transition for you to just kind of like, you know, you have been introduced to the channel, obviously through the fall, but like, is, do you think it's going to be weird to just kind of be like, here, yeah, here I am guys. I think so. It's going to kind of be like baptism by fire. I mean, we go from just like, oh yeah, Matt's in Colorado to 20 minutes of Matt walking around in New Mexico shed hunting. And it's just like, what the heck is this guy doing here? Like everybody's going to be like double checking. Like, is this the hush channel? Like, <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. That was. But that, Eric's right. Like we're not just hiring a camera guy. And, that, and, it, and this is what sets us apart a little bit from other people, I think, and especially TV world is Holly has, Hollywood has this thing called the fourth wall and you never break the fourth wall, which means you never show the camera, like the behind the scenes stuff. That's all really what we do is show behind the scenes stuff. So yeah, we're not just hiring a camera guy. We're hiring a personality basically. And, but that's what we want. And that's why I think what we've been able to create has worked so well is because you know even when it was me eric and brian we're we're all passionate about hunting and fishing and filming it but we're all very different have different personalities which i think is great because different people can relate to those different personalities and just like you matt you're you know logan we brought logan on same thing you're going to be you know just that just a little bit different than the rest of us than any of us and people are going to love that and there might be a a, a not a learning curve, but you know, like when Eric came on, yeah, it was like, who is this? Is this even the Hush channel? But he was like the, before Eric, it was just basically me and Logan a little bit. But so when Eric came on, it was like this completely new personality. But I think we're to a point now that people just know, you know, there's going to be different personalities on the channel. And I think they love it for that. Yeah, I think that's cool. Given, given people like the opportunity to like, I don't know, show who they are and like, what they like to do like when they're out in the woods because I shed hunt or I hunt a little bit different than all you guys like you're saying so it's like my little spin on everything a little niche yeah this is how we shed hunt Eric bro dude like I'm getting killed <laughs> where do you even find them I'm like literally in the rocks in the bushes under trees like you got to cover country like they could be anywhere I promise keep going Ten minutes later, dude, I'm coming over to where you are because like you're in the pocket and like I'm not finding anything. So I'm just gonna come. <laughs> Literally, this is weird. I'm gonna follow you and just see what you're looking at. I'm like, all right, meet me at the bottom of this canyon. I found a brown six point. Um, I like I went past it a little bit, but I I turned around so we can save it for the way out. We didn't walk 20 freaking yards, dude. 
seven point. Oh man, dude, seven point right in front of you, Eric. Oh crap, man. I feel bad. It's totally on your line. Like it's right past you, but dude, in my defense, I'm looking past you and I saw it cause you were talking and then it led to like, uh, four antlers right there in that little flat. We walked up, it was a set, a single, and the match to my six point. And I was like, dude, I literally like you weren't kidding when you're like, I'm just gonna follow you and see what you're see what you're looking at. No, my defense, dude, we are shed hunting a totally foreign area, totally foreign terrain. And I've walked now since I don't know, 9 a.m. and it's five, five thirty p.m. and I'm just getting my trash kicked in. I'm like, dude, what are you looking for? Like, because Eric's like, oh, I got a horn. I got another horn. Oh, I met, took a load up to camp. Like, I had too many horns. I'm like, dude, what are you looking at? He's just like, anything, dude. It, they're everywhere. They're, they're, it can be anywhere. I'm like, that is not good enough for me. Like, what type of trees? What type of grass? He's like, do anything. I was like, I'm just coming down by you. And yeah, I did snake three horns right out from underneath him. Oh, it's, it's good for Eric to snake a couple horns from him. Yeah, 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 he owes me for <laughs> Okay, so um, moving forward, Matt, we have, you know, we're trying to get our season set up. And one of the things, if you haven't learned yet uh, from us or being around us, but you will learn real quick, is we really run off the cuff. Trying to get organized with this crew, like to set like dates for hunts that are even going to happen like two months from now, it's really tough. Anyway, that's just kind of how we run. What are some things that you want to see? Cause I remember we're talking to you in Wyoming and you were, you had some advice, like things that maybe since you had this outside perspective for so long of watching our videos, what are maybe some things that you see or have noticed that maybe we could do better or we can improve on or something that maybe we've never even done that maybe you have an idea about. Do you, have you think about stuff like that? Yeah. So there's like two things I think I've talked to basically everybody on the team about like prior to being hired on, like, number one thing was our podcast. Like I love podcasts. And now that you guys are being like more active on it, I'm just like, heck yeah. Like podcasts is is like the best platform for people to really like understand who you are and just like really feel the closest to a person without actually knowing them. So that's, that's number one. And then number two, uh, I'm like, I'm the type of guy that loves like some cinematic, like juicy shots, just like some sweet stuff. And that's kind of where I want to kind of have Logan's really good at it. Like some of his intros and stuff are just like, Holy crap. Like his one in Kodiak, I watched that intro like 20 times over and over. Cause I was just like, what? Like, look at that shot. Like things like that. That gets me pumped. So I guess one thing I would like, I mean, obviously it's not going to happen right away, but maybe it could happen is like maybe do like a day by day vlog type series and then do like, a recap video that's just like strictly highlights like cinematic shots it's maybe like three to five minutes because i follow a little bit of both on instagram and youtube i like the the vlog style people like you yourselves and like other people like born and raised or randy newberg like that type of hump but then i also love like some super like cinematic type stuff and that's kind of that's kind of where i would like a little bit of both i guess but i mean that's really the only thing i can see I remember you telling me that and me like really thinking about that and being like, man, that's a killer idea because, and what he's talking about is a lot of times, you know, when we're doing a hunt, it's just kind of a vlog and it's day by day and it's kind of a grind. Um, And a lot of people like that. A lot of people watch our videos because of that. But I've noticed comments in the past that people are like, you guys are just talking into the camera the whole time. And so what Matt's talking about is running a, like a day by day series, like we typically do and then doing a kind of a highlight recap of the whole hunt with maybe less you know us speaking to the camera but kind of showing the whole process in a in a shorter uh shorter video correct yeah i think i'd capture like both sides of the fence like some people like i've caught myself sometimes just like fast forwarding to like kill shots or fast forwarding to like cool pack out sequences or antler pickups and i think that would kind of capture both people because some people love a 30 minute video that they just really get into and then some people are like all right dude just show me the highlights or just show me like the six shots like I think why not have both you already have the footage from the one you might as well just tweak another one and I know it's extra work for me or Logan or anybody but like I mean there's a whole nother audience that I feel would be like okay like these guys just don't talk into a camera these guys actually know how to 
make a shot list, know how to get different types of shots and know how to edit. And I think that'd be dope. We could, uh, that's, that's actually not a bad idea. Cause you know, me, I'll probably already, I like, I'm a storyteller. I like things in sequence. I like things in order. I like to just tell a story from like, Hey, we just like just pulled up to, Hey guys, we're going to bed. I like that storyteller stuff. Um, it's what I enjoy watching, but obviously there's, I mean, you can't like go wrong with a highlight that you're just like blown away, like six shots, like, you know, the best clips. That'd be a cool plan, man. Like I'll, I'm already seeing like some of the stuff you put together on shed tour and it's like, you know, when Casey and uh, Logan, I was on a phone call with them that downloaded and they just hit it. And like that first 30 seconds, they're like, dude, this is a sweet film. <laughs> and same with John and Keaton, you know, at shed camp. You're just like, hey guys, like I just messed around with this for like 30, 40 second intro. And they're just like, boom, let's go, baby. Like it got them so motivated. So, you know, it is, it is out of my realm. Um, but I would love to see some of that stuff get turned into like a, a like a shorter film that could maybe condense, like for example, our shed trip. You could probably make a a sweet eight minute video that's just like the best stuff after afterwards, after everyone's been able to see kind of that day-to-day -day series. Um, but dude, we need like the Hush Premium channel. I know, like the the Hush like exclusive. Yeah, that's how we get the Hush VIP list up. This yeah, is dude. this is one of the many reasons I love absolutely love how we run this business. We are literally guys at home. We're brainstorming future ideas about how we want to run this business on a podcast with you guys just listening. Like, don't go stealing our ideas, but. I I forgot we were on a podcast for a second. <laughs> I thought this was a business this meeting. A meeting. Yeah, this isn't just a meeting. But this is what's so great about like social media and stuff. And it's so instantaneous. Like you guys listening at home, is that something that you would like to see? Like you, you know, would you like to see a day to day by day series for, you know, six to seven days, however long we're out and then have like a recap maybe on the eighth day. So you get to see both of best worlds. Is that something that you guys would be, be interested in? Let us know in the comments down below. Yeah, let us know, man. And that's what's fun about this social media stuff and these platforms. It allows the the listeners, the followers, whatever you want to call them, to engage and give us feedback, man. And, and we take that feedback all the time, whether it's on our apparel, our hats, our videos, you know, our giveaways, whatever. And, uh, you know, obviously we're doing this because we love it and uh, not because we're just trying to make content that you guys want. <laughs> but we love feedback man and and that really helps us build and grow so if you guys got any feedback for us on anything drop us that comment it's funny i uh just remembered this um i think it'd been probably about a year but i was going into home depot doing something with my yard for like three or four days in a row and i kept running into this kid that worked there and uh we talked he let me know he watched our videos and and stuff and the fourth day i went in there he literally had this list of ideas that he think thinks would work really well on our channel which i can't remember your name i still have this and some of these ideas are really good and we're probably gonna probably gonna use some of them still, still. i think uh you know kind of going back to that cinematic style um you know for both you and logan you guys are clearly creative people like i like to edit and again i like to story tell i'm not I, I, I learned this through over time. Like I'm not into the cameras. Like you guys all know that. Like I don't like to tinker with the stuff. I'm auto film unfilm. but uh, you know, Logan and Matt, they're just next level when it comes to like their creative mindset, you know, and I saw Logan doing that early on, on the Hushin' with Favir channel. He took Casey's, you know, vlog style, like the old school style, style hunts to just the next level. And, um, you know, he's continued to grow through his illustration, editing, t-shirt design, packaging design. And again, Logan has kind of learned a lot of this just on his own uh, self-motivation and self-taught. And, and Matt is the same, like he's pitching me ideas and I just kind of look, he's like, dude, what do you think about this? I'm like, this is what I love about you. And obviously we're going to butt heads a little bit and we're going to tweak some stuff to make us both feel good about it. But we do want to allow both of you guys to be creative. So Matt's spitting out ideas and, hey, this would be a sweet Instagram reel. I'm like, dude, green light. Like, like, let your mind tick. You know, I could totally understand that if you're that creative mindset, but all you had to do is build it like the way we want it, it's almost like torture. It's like 
it's like a guy who paints wildlife told to paint cities all day. You know, he'd probably just go crazy. And here at Hush, like Casey said, we're just rolling with ideas. Like none of us are pros really at anything, um, but this will allow you and Logan to just use your creative mindset, man. Pitch ideas. Like I really don't feel like we can mess it up. Um, you guys have a good eye and totally understand what what the users like, and you guys understand that there are different guys. It's it's like your hat, your flat brim guys and your bent brim guys, man. We offer both because there's there's people that have different styles. So I think Matt's going to bring a new creative mind to some of the stuff that uh, he's with me on, where it would maybe be a little more cookie cutter. But I'm excited for both. Yeah, I like it. Well, let's wrap this thing up. Um, any last words, wisdom, ideas? Logue, let's start with you, buddy. Um, I'm excited about this new chapter, man. I uh, like whenever we're talking about bringing a new camera guy on or whatever, I always look at it as an opportunity to get a new teammate. And so that's huge for me, man. I'm so glad that you're on the crew now and I'm not, you know, trying to self self guide the production of things. And uh, I love hearing new ideas and it sounds like you're full of them. So welcome to the hush crew. Full of something, I guess. That was official, man. Welcome. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Happy to have you on the team. Like, obviously it's a good fit. You, you know, you probably knew at some point that, you know, there was going to be an opportunity in the hunting space and you've navigated your way through. So we just want to welcome you to the team. Like excited for what we're going to do moving forward. It sounds like you're very committed and, uh, you know, that means a lot that you're willing to come on, bring your personality, your skills and talent and contribute to Hush. So thank you. Welcome to the Hush Life. And for all the listeners, you guys are going to be seeing some cool content coming from us. Dude. Matt Lee. Dude, I just got to say to you guys first, like, thank you. Um, I'm excited. Um, I've been editing. I'm already like almost done with all my edits because I'm just so pumped. I can't sit still. I just... I'm literally just so excited. Uh, but then to like all you listeners, like thank you guys for like all the positive feedback I've seen on like some comments and posts and videos that I've helped with. Like, thank you guys. And I promise like I'm going to try my best, but have some patience with me and I hope to be here for the long haul. So yeah, thank you. Awesome, man. Just a couple things um, before we wrap this up. And Matt was saying this about us earlier, but Matt Lee is definitely what you see, what you get. This happy, smiley, go lucky, positive attitude is who Matt Lee really is. And we've spent enough time with him to know that that's just, that's Matt Lee. And I appreciate that, man. I really do. Um, so I guess the overall takeaway from this podcast, you take away whatever you want to take away from it. But, uh, you know, if you're really wanting to get into the hunting industry and make this your, your, your career, I would say kind of follow Matt's, Matt's path, like what he just talked about, where he knew, you know, it took brain surgery for him to realize that he wanted to live the rest of his life doing something that he absolutely loved and to wake up happy and excited about. It. Find that moment, find that moment when you realize that this nine to five thing that, and there's nothing wrong with nine to five. I know a lot of people that do it and they love it and that's all they want to do. And good on them. But if it's something that you want to step away from, you can, you can really do it and you can pursue your dreams and your, and all the happiness in the world because it's out there. It really is. So we appreciate you guys watching as always. Um, let us know if there's something, a, a topic you want us to talk about next, maybe a, a special guest that we're going to bring on. Uh, like Eric was saying, we, we love the feedback. Let us know. Also real quick, uh, if you haven't signed up for our SMS VIP list you'll want to do that we do giveaways we kind of keep you guys informed on what's going on all you have to do is text hush vip one word to 29071 you'll be signed up so if we do a giveaway in a year from now your your name will already be in the hat so do yourself a favor sign up for that and we will see you next time here on the hush life podcast see ya <laughs>